Hello and welcome fellow bookworms and film fans. It is that time of the week again. This week's episode we'll be looking at Charlie and the Chocolate Factory by Roald Dahl. Now the book itself was published in 1964 and there are two film adaptations, one in 2005 and one in 1971. Now I will be focusing on the one in 1971, not the one in 2005. Uh, and that was the one that is starring Gene Wilder who is lovely actor such a lovely actor now as you know as always i will be scaling the adaptation on character representation setting plot overall books of film adaptation how it did and does the film stand in its own right now as per usual i will be discussing the film and the book it's in its entirety so if you have not seen the film if you've not read the book please do so before watching this as there will be spoilers so first up characters now, as we're aware, there are many characters in the book. I will be focusing on a couple of them and just having a general talk about the others. Now, you've got Willy Wonka himself. He is described as being very tall, very eccentrically dressed. He's in like purples and greens, top hat, walking stick, all of that. And it is beautifully shown with Gene Wilder. Um, I think it's fantastically done on the film. Uh, admittedly, <laughs> in the film, he's a little bit scarier, a little bit more intense. But overall, I think it was done brilliantly. You've got Charlie himself, Charlie Bucket, and he is sort of like a scrawny, very slim kid, under uh, malnourished, um, sort of, his family's very poor, and I mean very poor. And he's just a happy boy as well. Like he, he's happy with just one bar of chocolate a year from his family. And he's just a lovely person. And they get that very well on screen. You, you get that sense that he is just a lovely human being um, and that he doesn't want much from his family because he knows he can't get much from his family. Then you've got Grandpa Joe, um, who's Charlie Bucket's granddad. Now, all of the grandparents in the book is described as being infirm and stuck in bed and basically unable to do anything or go anywhere. And then the minute Charlie uh, receives a golden ticket, Suddenly, Grandpa Joe is dancing around, jumping up out of bed. Uh, but he's also described as being very slim, very, very malnourished as well. And again, beautifully done across on screen. I think, honestly, you, you can't go wrong, really, um, with the characters that they, they progressed. Obviously, you do have the children as well. You've got the very fat Augustus Gloop, which I'm just going to say pretty much every single character that they moved across from the book to the screen was beautifully done and got the characteristics straight on. So you've got Augustus Gloop, who's very fat. Violet, um, who is uh, always chewing gum, oh, I hate gum, um, and you've got, um, oh, I've forgotten all the names of the children, <laughs> you've got Mike TV, um, and then you've got Veruca Salt as well, now Veruca is one of those, me, 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 Mike TV is obsessed with, with, well, TV, basically, um, and they all get their comeuppance within the book. And I think they're beautifully done. Now, the only big, big difference in characteristics is the Oompa Loompas. Now, in the film, they're bright orange. They've got bright hair. You know, they all seem to be male. Uh, they're very brightly dressed as well, which I think adds to the imagination and the sort of like childlike intensity that comes with the Chocolate Factory. Whereas in the book, they're described as being very thin. Um, they're men, women and children because Willy Wonka rescued the entire um, village. They're also described as being very pale skinned and, and uh, brown haired. So I that is a huge, huge difference for me. Um, I can see why the filmmakers did it. Because as I said, it's childlike imagination. If you think Oompa Loompas, you think, oh, they're magical creatures. What are they? Um, and they are always singing like they do in the book. And I think I understand why they changed it so much. Um, but overall, I will give character representation a 9 out of 10. So apart from Willy Wonka's intensity, which is dialed to a thousand in the film, and the Oompa Loompas themselves being changed very drastically, everything else character-wise, everybody else, they got pretty much spot on. Now next you have setting. Now the setting is set in a little town, and then you've got the magical, huge um, chocolate factory itself. You get that in the film 100% you get that in the film you get the imagination of of what Roald Dahl was trying to get across you've got all these different rooms that he described that you really wanted to see as a child and you do and I think the filmmakers beautifully do it especially when you first come into the book and um, into the factory even and they describe sort of like everything's edible the grass is edible the trees are edible and everything is edible in the film as well 
Um, so I think it is quite hard uh, to get setting wrong, as I've seen in all the past episodes I've done. Nine times out of ten, they get it pretty much spot on. So I'm going to give setting a ten out of ten for that. It's got exactly what it needed to. Now you've got plot. Now, the plot is essentially almost exactly the same. So it starts off the same. It starts off with um, Charlie basically you, you realize how poor he is you realize that he doesn't get much in life you realize that um his mom and his dad have no money you have the four grandparents that are living um in one bed you you get this sense of it being a really desolate place for for charlie but you also get as well that in the book now it does miss out because in the book when grandpa joe starts talking about willy wonka himself you do get that feeling that Grandpa Joe has worked there before or knows somebody that worked there. And he talks about Willy Wonka's history. He talks about the fact that he used to employ humans um, and then people were selling the secrets on. So Willy Wonka got rid of all the humans, then disappeared. And in the book, you see that he goes off to all these different places. You hear a bit more about his history, about his background, that he rescues these Oompa Loompas, which you find out he rescues the Oompa Loompas later on. But you do get a lot more of his history and his background in the books than you do in the film. But I understand why they didn't do it in the film. Because obviously Willy Wonka's like this, this mythical character. Even though he's human, he's got this mind that's absolutely brilliant. That comes up with all these fantastic ideas when it comes to sort of like unlimited gobstoppers. And a piece of gum where you have three meals in one. And chocolate bars that you can take from TVs. And you know, and all that imagination. And I can see why the filmmakers wanted to keep him as sort of like a, a, a mythical creature almost. Even though, as I said, he is human, he's got this imagination that's just, uh, you know, unrivaled by anybody. Now you come across the golden tickets the exact same way. So in the book, you have the, the way that the children win it are exactly the same way. You have the way that Charlie wins it the same as well. So you get that initial chocolate bar for his birthday and you think, come on, Charlie, you've got this. Doesn't win. Then Grandpa Joe has a hidden sixpence or something and Charlie runs off to get a chocolate bar. Doesn't win. And you're sat there going, I know he wins. I know he wins. How does he win? And then he comes across some money in the gutter, sees it, goes into the store, buys a chocolate bar, doesn't win, but then has changed and buys another one and wins on that one and he wins the day before the gates are due to open and i think that's so sweet because obviously you've got this little kid and he's a little kid um that basically five almost five times it took him to win this chocolate bar and this is a kid that only has one chocolate bar a year so i think it is beautifully done and it is very well transitioned to the film because you do see the exact same thing happen there the fact that you you're, you're rooting for him and you know he's going to win but you just don't know when he's going to win or how he's going to win so you get that um, and then you get sort of like the big build up, the big excitement and then they come to the day where they go and each child is allowed parents or one guardian with them and Grandpa Joe ends up going with Charlie but all the rest have their like their mums and dads. So you go into the factory exactly the same way, Willy Wonka himself is very you know eccentric and everything like that and says hi to all the children. <coughs> Then brings them across the, the river of chocolate, which apparently mixes the best chocolate because it's the waterfall that makes the best chocolate, which mm, I'm willing to give a go. I, you know, I've always been intrigued by Willy Wonka's chocolate. And that's how you lose Augustus Gloop. He decides to drink directly from the stream itself and falls in and gets sucked up a pipe. One kid down, four to go. Now you then come across the boat. Now, I remember the boat scene in the film is just a little bit crazy. And I'm not going to lie, it did creep me out a little bit as a child. As an adult, I look back and go, how is he allowed near children? But <laughs> as a child, I was like, oh my God, that's a little bit. So this candy cane boat comes through and you've got this, you know, everybody sits down and they're going really fast. And in the book, it's sort of like they're just going fast when Willy Wonka's going, woo, in the back. But... In the film, Willy Wonka has like this weird reflection of light off his face and he's sort of like very, very full on. <coughs> and you do go, oh, it's a li little bit full on, but it's fine, you know. He's a mad inventor. What are you expecting? So he goes on and they go past all these different rooms and they go into the inventing room. And the inventing room is where you come across and get rid of, I love a child. So... 
he comes across this this inventing room where he's got all his best inventions that haven't yet been shown to Umpa Lumpas or anything. And from there, he introduces this piece of gum that's three meals in one. So it's going to revolutionise things and it's going to make sure that there's not as much poverty and there's not as much starvation going on in the world because you eat this one stick of gum and it's like you're eating three meals. <coughs> Sorry, I do apologise. I've got a bit of a cough. So, obviously, Violet wants to eat it. So she then eats it and turns into a blueberry, giant, massive, round blueberry. So then he sends her off to be squeezed and that's second child down, three left. So in the film, you do also see, so in the book and the film, you hear about this um, magical drink. That as you drink it, it can let you float and then you need to be, you need to burp to let yourself back down. In the book, it's just mentioned they go on. In the film, Grandpa Joe and Charlie do end up drinking it and then realising that they're going up towards a fan about to be chopped into a million pieces and then start burping to let themselves back down, which is absolutely fine. Um, so they do add a little bit there in the film. But then you're still going along. Um, and also, I've got to say as well, every single time a child disappears, Oompa Loompas do sing. They're very psychotic little creatures sometimes because they, they basically sing about this child's misfortune. And yes, the children are horrible children and they're not very nice and they're spoiled and everything. You still got to think you're basically torn in the family here. So anyway, so you go on, you carry on throughout the factory tour and then you come across the nut room. Now in the film, it is geese and it's geese that are lay laying golden eggs. And of course, Veruca would like a golden egg. She would like a geese that would lay a golden egg because she wants and what she wants, she gets and always has. So in the film, she's sort of like, I want a golden egg, you know, I want this. And then she gets pushed down the chute. In the book, it's slightly different. It is squirrels who are very good at de... I think it's... They, they, they deal with walnuts, basically, and they get they get the, the nut out of the shell very well. And they've been specifically trained. And again, Veruca wants this, this, this little squirrel, and she wants a very well-trained squirrel. She goes into the room, despite the fact that uh, Willy Wonka's going, please don't, you know, they're, they're trained squirrels. They will think you're a bad nut. They tap on her head, realise she's a bad nut. She goes falling in. Then... Her mum follows and her dad follows and they both get pushed down the chute. Ended up in the rubbish chute. At which case, that's three down. And there's only two left. So you carry on the tour. And Willy Wonka seems very unperturbed. Um, what's the word? He's not very bothered that he keeps losing children. It's almost like he wants to lose the children. Which you find out later in the end that he kind of did. He wanted to figure out who was the best one, basically. So then you come on to a great invention, which, in all fairness, I'm kind of glad it doesn't exist because I would be doing it way too often and my weight would definitely balloon out. And it's the ability to transport chocolate through the TV. And that's where we get rid of Mike TV. Because he wants so badly to be in TV, he jumps into the little machine and he gets transported over into the TV. Now, when he arrives in the TV, obviously... Willy Wonka does say because he brings out a huge chocolate bar and a massive chocolate bar and says everything shrinks when you send it through the airwaves to the TV. So when Mike TV, who's a normal sized human being, goes all the way over into the TV, he comes out a little teeny tiny person, almost like a borrower. And his parents are absolutely distraught. So Willy Wonka turns around and goes, oh, go take him to be stretched and then we can give him some fattening up solution and he'll be as right as rain. So that's now four down that leaves only one that leaves charlie now you all know obviously when you start off in the film and the book that this little boy is going to win whatever it is he's going to win he is the nicest little boy he's very considerate and caring <coughs> and very understanding of, of his fate in life so this is where it differs slightly in the book of the film and I'm not entirely sure I'm happy with how intense the film gets. Because as he gets to the end, Willy Wonka kind of ignores him completely in the film. And then he starts snapping at him and having a go at him and being like, you took this, you drank this, you shouldn't have done that. Blah, blah, blah. Like having a massive go at him. And then he eventually turns around and goes, it was a test, you've passed, you now own the factory. <laughs> Can you believe it? Um, he's put this child through all of that and then he's just rude and then turns around and goes, 
you now own the factory. In the book, he's a lot nicer. He sort of turns around and goes, I'm so happy it's you that won. You know, let's go get your family. They go in the glass elevator, which can go up, down, sideways, turn around, up, you know, any way, any which way that you want. And he says, where do you live? You know, because now your family's going to come live with us. They're going to have everything they can ever want. They're never going to want for food or drink or anything like that ever again. And you are going to own the factory. You are going to learn from me and basically take it over. And I think that's such a nice heartwarming moment in the book and I'm a little bit disappointed that the film kind of put Charlie almost through this very last test where he's disregarded and absolutely shouted at and screamed at by an adult because there was no need for it um but overall obviously the the end is very similar so in the end of the the film and the end of the book Charlie's family finds out that he won um even though they didn't know it was a competition he's won and he is now able to move into the factory because he now owns it now you do also see in the book and the film the rest of the kids sort of sorrily trudging along as they realize that they have messed up their lives they get unlimited chocolate anyway for life so can't really complain but they realize that maybe they didn't get exactly what it is that they wanted and so you've got that and i mean overall the plot is spot on spot on in regards to to what it brings from the book it brings absolutely everything from the book and apart from that intensity as i've mentioned before of um willy wonka um and the fact that it, there's that little scene sort of towards the end where he's really rude and also obviously bringing in the the chugging of the drinks i think that they kept everything really as it should be and they brought everything from the book they brought everything that needs to be brought from the book to the silver screen and i think they did that so fantastically well so i am willing to give it a eight out of ten for plot now the film is a very very good film and i do love gene wilder i really do um i love him in <laughs> no evil i love him in the producers i love him in so many films i think he's just such a great actor but it captures the pure imagination, pun intended, of the song, I know, of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And it brings to life everything that anyone as a child has read this book has imagined the Chocolate Factory to be. And I think they did it so wonderfully well. And it looks so appetising and it looks so nice. Um, but I do think that, you know, it is a beautiful film. And I think it is one that you can watch and you can watch over and over again. And apart from that little boat scene and the end scene, I think it's one that you can watch with your family and show to your children and it will carry on living for generations. So I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 for it does the film stand in its own right. I think it 100% stands in its own right. Now, because of everything I've mentioned before, I think, honestly, the adaptation has everything you needed from it it's got everything from the book it's got pretty much all the characters spot on it's got the setting spot on it just brings you into this world and it shows you on screen what it is that you wanted to see from this book and i think you couldn't have asked for better and for that reason i'm going to give this 1971 film willy wonka and the chocolate factory a nine out of ten for overall adaptation from the book now, of course, as I say every week, this is my own opinion. If you disagree or if you'd like to comment on anything that I have said, please do leave a comment below. Click subscribe so you can get alerted whenever a new video is up. But as I said, I do try to get them out on a Wednesday around about five o'clock. Do like it as well. Um, drop me a message if there's any adaptations that you want me to have a look at. I've got a very long list. I've got loads of books. <laughs> and I've also been on a bit of a buying spree as well. So... Um, I will happily get to any book that you suggest um, as quickly as I can. Now, next week, you will be joining me for a, another beautiful um, film and book, The Princess Bride. And I cannot wait to share it with you. So, until then, don't forget to always keep it contento.